uh, personally, I found it easier playing higher because uh, of the fact that the lower the divisions, the more unpredictable the game is. Uh, there's uh, there's a lot of challenges. There's a lot of uh, 50-50 balls. Um, while playing in the Premier League or the Championship, it's uh, there's more of a pattern to the game. So you can be um, anticipating things easier. Uh, yeah, there is certainly a difference in quality, but the pace of the game, I think it's the same in every division. In the, the VAR Show. The one place for your weekly football update. So hello, a very warm welcome to the VAR show. The show which talks about all the base major football leagues in detail. Today we are going to conduct some interviews, and we have Mr. Dimitrios Konstantopoulos with us, who in his illustrious career has played for like likes of Middlesbrough, Cardiff, AEK, Athens, Greece, among a host of other teams. So without wasting much time, I'd like to first thank Mr. Konstantopoulos for coming on the show. Thank you and welcome to the show. And I'd like to begin by asking you, how are you, and what are you doing these days? Uh, it's good. Uh, I'm good. I'm very well, thank you. Uh, these days, I'm uh, I'm focusing on my coaching badges and um, preparing to get back into football in some capacity as a coach, probably. So, you know, I'll, I'll get to your playing career. And I was when I was preparing the questions, I saw you have played in so many different leagues and teams. How different, you know, like was the culture that you experienced while playing for so many teams? It is it is different and it takes some time of uh, adjustment, uh, but it's a great experience because uh, you get knowledge from uh, different leagues. Uh, you, I worked under different managers and under different coaches, playing with uh, different good players. And that uh, gives you a broad perspective of the world of football, which I can use now uh, going into coaching. Like, like, I wanted to ask, like, uh, like, like, like you said that it might be useful, like, you know, like going into coaching and you have played in England where probably many of the managers would probably not have that much experience that you had probably in so many countries like they would have been confined to maybe England. So was it, do you think that like, since you have experience in so many countries, do you think that will help you to, as a manager, understand foreign players more? I think so. I think so. Because, um, most most important thing in being a manager, I think it's understanding the mentality of a player and uh, being able to get the 100% out of a player. And when foreign uh, players come into it, uh, then it uh, possibly a different treatment. And me having that experience, uh, it might save me time of actually uh, breaking into these players and managing to get them to feel comfortable and get the 100% out of them. And you like for you personally, I think you began your career in England with Hartlepool. So how was it difficult to adjust coming in from maybe uh, Greece and Portugal where you played before that? Uh, it was initially because obviously England is different in many ways, not just uh, football wise, but the, the way of life. Um, but I always had that desire to come and play in England because I thought it was a uh, the most difficult uh, leagues in the world and the most competitive. And I was a, a Man United fan as a, as a kid and a Peter Schmeichel fan. So, yeah, as soon as I, I got that opportunity, I jumped straight into it. Uh, I was relying on my ability and my confidence and it worked out well in the end. Of course, I knew, like, like since you're a goalkeeper, maybe it was more difficult because only one goalkeeper plays a game for a team. So, you know, how... How difficult was it, you know, like to come to England and maybe dislodge a keeper who was already there? When I first came, obviously I came um, as a trialist. The the team wanted to look at me. There was already a goalkeeper playing, uh, so I had to wait for my time. My position is uh, is different than any other position on the pitch, and you have to have that patience and uh, not to get disheartened too much. Uh, and wait for your chance. So effectively, that's what I did. I believed in myself, 
uh, and uh, I showed what I can do when I got the chance, and uh, eventually I uh, I managed to secure uh, the position. And you're like, do you think like for a goalkeeper it is more difficult to go to a new team because it also depends on the coach that is there because of the philosophy whether how the coach wants to play. Is it like that for you? Yes, of course. Different coaches have different uh, mentality or play style of play. Uh, sometimes the style way is not preferable to what you used to or what you know to do best. It might have negative impact to your performance. So it's important to be able to choose when you have an opportunity to go somewhere to analyze that and see if that will be beneficial for you to to actually perform better. But luckily, most of the teams are played for. Uh, the coaches and the goalkeeping coaches I work with, um, they manage to. Uh, get me get the best out of me and uh, and and perf- make me perform uh, the best of my ability of course and you like i want to ask like you began playing from the mid 1990s and it's almost 2020 it's 2020 and it's almost been i think around close to three decades that you have been in the game as a goalkeeper how has the game changed you like in terms of a goalkeeper oh yes massively when i when i started playing when i was a young boy I remember it was still goalkeepers could catch the ball in the back, could catch it with, uh, with your hands. You know, yeah. Uh, goalkeepers had to start involving playing with their feet, and that's progressing still. Uh, and it, I think it was harder for actually being in that transition rather than coming into it right now and learning from a young age. So. My generation had to adapt to this, and it was it, it was a bit difficult. But then eventually, uh, I managed, you know, to do it and work hard on it and uh, improve on my footwork and playing as a player, really. Uh, which uh, I think it's very important these days for a goalkeeper. Of course, you like you mentioned footwork, and you're like this is something at least for the wider audience. It is something very new, like you know, like maybe you can trace back to Guardiola turn eight nine in Barcelona. I think basically uh, worldwide it start the it got the fame. I think during that phase, Bef- but you have been involved before that. Was it always there, and it was not looked upon by other audience? The footwork. Yes, I think I think it was always a natural evolution of the game uh, to become like this. And then when coaches, like uh, as you said, Guardiola and other you know, coaches that they like, they like the more more passing game. Uh, came into the picture uh, that evolved even uh, quicker, uh, and that was a normal transition for the keepers as well. And these days, as we know, the goalkeepers have to be, have to be playing as defenders, really, being able to pass the ball and use their feet as well as the as the players. Uh, and we see that in younger generations that are coming out now uh, that they're focusing a lot. On their footwork, uh, as, as as much as their their hands. Of course, and you like one important aspect that I noticed in your career was that you played for Swansea and Cardiff City. How did that happen? Oh, it was a it was like a like a long story. I initially signed a loan for Swansea City with Roberto Martinez, and his style of football was uh, basically like Pep Guardiola's. He liked to play the ball on the ground, um, attacking football, creative football. And I stayed there for about three months and uh, I was about to sign again until the end of the season. But due to bad weather, I got snowed in and I didn't make it in time to sign the extension deal. So after that, a week after Cardiff came, so I went to Cardiff, which was, uh, yeah, it was a bit conflicting with uh, all the Swansea fans. So how was it? How how was the experience like you know like playing for the you know, like both very big rivals in their own rights? How was it? It is a it's a big rivalry. Uh, it's uh, they're very passionate. Both sets of fans. Uh, they want the team to do well, and to be in derbies both sides. Uh, uh, it, it was strange. It's strange. Uh, but it was, it was really that uh, uh, twice in the same season for different for different sides. 
of course and you like uh, i wonder do, do do you still get sticks from the f- any any of those fans uh, sometimes i do from cardiff fans because uh obviously my senior swansea was uh uh was i would say better like for cardiff i didn't play much uh yeah but s- sometimes uh, i get some stick but uh, i think swansea fans are still have high regard for me uh but cardiff Uh, I don't know. There, there's still some uh, not believers. So I wanted to ask you, like you know, like usually you see, like the fans are very passionate and they fight with each other's, you know, like in maybe verbal and in online. But the uh, players are more friendly and they don't really care much about it, like because uh, of the field probably. How how is it that like like do they have the same rivalry of the field or is it just on the field that they have a huge rivalry and off the field it is more relaxed. Uh, I think on the field is more more relaxed uh, than off the field because it basically has to do with uh, geographically. You know, the fans are always people who live in the area, and they're always passionate about the club. Players could be players, uh, unless the players who are born and bred in the in in, in that town, mm-hmm. then the players from other towns, so they, they don't have that rivalry feeling uh, as as big. But obviously, when you play at a derby against a, a rival team, you get that uh, sort of um, uh, they put it into you. Uh, you get that buzz. But obviously, always the fans' rivalry will be will be the biggest. And you're like you have played for quite a lot of clubs around Europe. If you had to choose one club where you had the most fun, which one would that be? I had a I had a great great time at uh, when I came back to, to Greece for play for Kerkir FC in 2010 after seven years in England. It was a new project. The team just got promoted to the Premier League in Greece, and uh, it was all new. Basically, uh, it was high hopes. Our uh, goal was to stay in the division, and uh, we've done extremely well with uh, with not the biggest budget. Uh, and I, it, it was great fun because the whole island of Corfu was behind the team. Uh, we had a good bond with, with the team, and we managed to stay in the division. And I had a great team. I managed to get the cup for the for the uh, international team as well. You know, like I, I had a very uh, you know like I had a doubt, very strong doubt. And you know, like you said, like how you uh, you plan to sign for Swansea other than the. Uh, incident which did not let you sign because of the snow, whatever. So in in Swansea, you're playing under Martinez, who likes to play out from the back, and then you move to Cardiff, which was more robust kind of. I think Dave Jones was the manager, and it was more robust. So did when you moved to Cardiff, did the defenders let you play out from the back, or did you have to kick it out because they were not comfortable? No, you have instructions from the manager, and you know you have to do what the manager wants. Uh, want you to do, and obviously, um, when a team is uh, drilled to play like this with long balls, then the defenders will not be comfortable to get the ball from the back. So you just identify that, and you don't pass them the ball because uh, you know it could be dangerous. So yeah, you have to change your style, you have to adapt uh, and adjust. Uh, but this is a part of the job. Uh, that's why you. You must not, as a, I think, as a goalkeeper and as a player in general, you must not have uh, one certain style of, of of play that you're good at. You have to be able to adjust because going to a different team, you might used to do something else. You know, and like personally for you, do you like playing out from the back or do you like kicking it out? Um, I'm a good kick, so yeah, I I, I like obviously targeting the the strikers or the wingers. Last five six years, I think uh, I'm, I'm much more comfortable playing from the back uh, because of the experience. Because I got better uh, with my feet as well. Because no matter how old you are, I think, especially as a goalkeeper, because we have that uh, luxury of being able to, to, to play in our careers further, uh, you're still evolving and you're still you're still improving. So yeah, at the minute, I think I'm. You know, I can adapt in the, in any game. 
of course and you like to, yeah so i wanted to ask you like like uh, since you said that like you had but you had your uh, you played for a lot of clubs in greece which is your home homeland and uh, you also played a lot of your career in england with various teams what is the basic difference in goalkeeping in these two countries like that you faced the biggest one is the the game in england is much much faster so you have to be constantly aware and uh, there's no time to to relax you have to be constantly in the game there's no many pauses in the game uh, while in greece and i think other mediterranean countries technical there's more fouls the most stop in the game uh, but in england it's 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 a fast paced game and uh, as a goalkeeper you always have to be alert uh, and because you, you you might be needed to get in the action at any any minute um so yeah the concentration aspect was a, was the biggest difference for me and also in england you played in quite a lot of divisions like i think you played in league 2 league 1 and championship how like people say it's very different to play in league 2 league 1 and championship in terms of the football that is being played what was your experience was it different uh, personally i found it easier playing higher because uh, of the fact that the lower the divisions the more unpredictable the game is uh, there's uh, there's a lot of challenges there's a lot of uh, 50 50 balls um, while playing in the premier league or the championship it's uh, there's more of a pattern to the game so you can be um, anticipating things easier uh, yeah there is a, certainly a difference in quality but the pace of the game i think it's the same in every division of course and you like i wanted to ask you like you played a huge amount of games for middlesbrough how was it how was your time there oh it was brilliant uh, i spent 6 years in middlesbrough and i really enjoyed it, it was uh, um uh, obviously we managed to get promotion to premier league uh, which was a, a goal and uh, for me to be part of this uh, squad and that and that achievement it was it was great experience uh you know i still love the club i still have great connections with the club uh, and i I'll, I'll always have uh, but no it was a tremendous experience it was the longest suspend a, a, a club uh and obviously it's uh, it's something i'm proud of and you like you helped middlesbrough you know like you were in the contingent who qualified to the premier league but unfortunately you did not play in the premier league so do you feel sad when you look back that that you didn't get to play yeah of course of course playing in the premier league i think it's the it's the ultimate goal of every footballer because it's the most competitive league, league in the world the most prestigious one and it was uh, yeah, and i wanted I wanted to get that uh uh opportunity to play in the premier league uh I, I was frustrated and uh, sad that I didn't get a chance but at the end of the day it's, it's it's football and you know you can only do what you what you're asked to do uh but if you don't get the chance it's important not to put your head down and keep trying to improve yourself and you like 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 like, like you said it like you can't uh, create a fuss and it's easier said than done how do you keep your mind because you are part of a team and you are integral winning the championship and suddenly you are not getting to play it must be very very frustrating you know for you it is it is extremely frustrating it's uh it was a it was a shock to me uh, that i didn't you know get even a a chance uh but you have to cope that's that's the difficult part of being a goalkeeper you have to cope mentally off the off the pitch with a lot of things uh, disappointments and, and stuff like that Uh, but I think the situation like that makes you stronger mentally, and uh, I think it did to me. Uh, so, yeah, it's 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 something that I would have liked to do. It didn't happen, so hopefully I'll do it as, as a manager. Hopefully, and you're like uh, I want to ask you, like you, uh, Middlesbrough got two good keepers in the sense they got Victor Valdez, I think, and they got Brad Cousin when you were there. How was it with them? It was good it was good experience. Uh, I'm very good friends with Brad. Uh, he's a top, he's a top guy and we worked together very well. Obviously uh, Victor was a different mentality. Uh, we still work fine together. 
uh, and you know his, his pedigree and his and his experience and his uh, his achievements are massive. Uh, so we yeah, we all we all try to help each other in the, the training ground, uh, try to improve. Uh, but it was uh, they, they were both really top top professionals. And you know, like uh, uh, staying with like like you are doing your badges, coaching badges, and want to get into coaching. As a coach, what type of football do you want your team to play? Look, uh, if you ask any coach, he'll tell you the same thing that they want their team to play attacking football, attractive football with lots of goals. But I think as a manager, the most important thing is to go when you go into a team is to identify the strengths of the team. You can't go mm-hmm. to a team that it's not suited to play attractive uh, attacking football. And you're trying to make the players do that because it's not going to work. So it's important to adapt and adjust and try to get the best out of the players uh, according to the strength. And in time, if you get the time, you can bring your own players that they're suited to you, the style that you want to play and slowly build the team that you want. I think adjustment is a big, uh, big factor in uh, managing a team. And of course, like you know, like personally, I have not seen a lot of goalkeepers be managers. Like they are goalkeeper coaches, but why? Why, why do you think is that something like that is happening? Because we have a lot of goalkeepers who have achieved a lot in the game, but they don't really get into management. I know it's. Uh, I think it's the sort of automatic path, really, for for goalkeepers. You know, because it's a different position. They are the, we are the experts of this position, so it makes sense to go and be a, uh, in, in a pose of being a manager. But I think that the fact that you play behind everyone else in a game and you look at the game from from a different angle, really, it, it actually helps for, for a goalkeeper to understand the game better. And uh, there's a goalkeeping goalkeepers who become managers and are successful, like the. Um, Nuno Santos, uh, uh, Santos in um, Wolves, who's done um, absolutely brilliant with them, uh, and that's why I think helped him a lot. And I think it helped me as well because now I can see the game and I can I can use the experience that I have uh, to identify as a manager strengths. Of course, Anjuna, I wanted to ask you, like, in terms of of as a Player, which manager had the most influence on you? A goalkeeping coach or manager? Like both, if you like. Uh, I I work with many managers and many goalkeeping coaches. Uh, most of them were were really good. Uh, Eric Steele, as a goalkeeping coach, uh, used to be a Man United. He he, he, he trained Peter Schmeichel and Edwin Van der Sar. You know, huge names, and uh, I worked with him, and I got a lot of him because of his knowledge. And I was lucky enough to work with him. Uh, for manager-wise, I think I have a because of the of the uh, the admiration that he was getting from the players when he when he when he signed for Middlesbrough and uh, the discipline that he brought in the into the team. And uh, the organization in general, and I think a team. What I would take from him is, it's a very important thing to be organized as a team because that's where everything starts from. Of course, and you like I'll ask you like in your this might again be difficult in your career if you had to choose one moment, which was the most proud moment for you? Which one would that be? Um, I would choose. I would choose the one, the first one that the one that. Obviously, my first cup for for Greece, uh, playing in front of a full stadium, in front of your uh, fellow countrymen, here the national anthem. It's a proud moment. And then I would say the the last game of the season with uh, Middlesbrough, when we got promoted to the Premier League, the last. Go the game and the ball. Obviously, and the secure promotion. It was a surreal moment because the atmosphere was tremendous, and the whole town was really vibrating for weeks. So yeah, I think these two moments were the best. And you like as as a player, were you superstitious? Like, did you have any routine that you would follow before games? But not just football, but any sport. I would, they would tell you 
they have superstitions. If someone tells you they don't, they're lying. We all do. I have I have many, which I've always followed. It's like a it's like a trigger or a mental switch for every athlete, I think. So yeah, we all we all have some some some, some weird ones or strange ones, but uh, you know whatever makes you switch on. Definitely, and you know, like as as a keeper again, like which centre back. When you were playing behind, which centre back were you? Did you feel the most comfortable? Who was the best centre back you played against? Uh, behind, sorry. I would say, I would say, I would say definitely the partnership uh, that we had between Daniel Ayala and uh, Ben Gibson in the winning uh, promotion winning season. It was the the most, I think, the, the perfect pairing uh, with them two, and obviously with me at the back because. They were uh, complementing each other, so each one had different strengths, and they were working together as a pair. And obviously, we, because we were friends off the pitch as well, we had great understanding, and each one of us knew, you know, and anticipate hundred uh, percent of the time. Obviously, a great defensive unit. And you like? Did you have any particular? Player uh, uh, in the opponent or any opponent player that you did not like facing, like who would uh, would score a lot of goals against you or something? Uh, no, no. In terms of goals, I think it was one striker who played for a few championship clubs. Clubs. Uh, uh, his name is Vaughn. Um, I don't know if he's still playing. I, I hated playing against him because because he would not stop chasing things. You don't. You wouldn't leave you a moment of peace. You know any back passes. He would chase. He would tackle. So yeah, it was really, really annoying. Definitely. And you know, like uh, on that note, I'll ask you two final questions. And the first of the two is, if you had to give a piece of advice to a young keeper who's just starting out, what advice would you give that keeper? I would say uh, to keep a balance uh, mentally. Our position is. He's got to do a lot of uh, with 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 mental aspect as long as the physical one. Obviously, train as hard as you can and trying to improve, but keep a balance on in and in and out of the pitch uh, because we all make mistakes. We all, you know, have bad moments, but not not to get overly excited after a good performance, and not overly uh, disappointed over a bad performance because that can affect uh, your your consistency. Our position is about consistency, being able to produce performances every game, and usually the best keepers are the most consistent ones. So I would say, uh, believe in yourself and just mistakes happen. Just carry on, uh, do the same, and try to improve yourself. Hey, I I have one follow up question to that. You like mistakes are part and parcel of the game. How do you? Bounce back, you know, like after a game where you have made mistake, a huge mistake. I usually have my best games after a game that I made a mistake. I don't know, I don't know why and why. I didn't have any specific, you know, uh, ritual or how to deal with. But I usually, you know, well, after after a game that I made a mistake, I always wanted to go back and and prove to myself that that was a, a one off. That uh, it won't happen again. I think that's the mentality that uh, you should have. Not not overly compensate and try to correct a mistake by trying to be to do things that you you're not comfortable in doing. But just continue to do what you do and try to show first to yourself and then to the others that that mistake was one off. Of course, and so I'll I'll wrap wrap up the interview by asking one final question and. You know, if you had the option to, uh, if whom would you not want to face out of these two players, Ronaldo or Messi? Not one. Yeah, or who would you want to face, or who do you, who would you not want to face? I actually faced Ronaldo when I was in the, in Portugal at a friendly when he was still at Sporting. He was back then. He was only a young boy, and you could see his potential. Uh, because the ball is the best footballers in the in the world, uh, the the both the best because even though they have different styles, 
Uh, but yeah, I think the mess is trickery and how fast he can he can shoot. You know, while you're off balance, that makes it harder for for a goalkeeper. Seeing obviously the goals he scored. Of course, and you like on that note, and Dimitrios, thank you so much for talking to me, and I wish you all the best for your future career as a coach and all other endeavors that you get into. And I hope we can talk in soon, and possibly you can win all the trophies and manage in the Premier League, which you did not play. But I hope you can go there, and maybe probably win it. So you know, I hope thank we can you. talk in soon. Thank you once again for coming. Take care, stay safe. Bye. Thank you. Bye.